Hello there! In this video, I'm going to build with you, step by step, a minecart grinder trap that's going to be fully automated. There is going to be no shoving or no external dwarven power necessary. All it requires will be one blundering buffoon stepping on a pressure plate. So we're going to start on out with this setup here. We're going to let the minecart drive back and forth in this hallway. And to get that started, we require, of course, tracks. You find them in the construction tab. We're going to put them here. And the ending points will also be, be the points where we will power up the minecart to drive in the direction that we want it to. To get the whole ball rolling, we go one step upstairs. And uh, we're, we're, we see here the behind the scenes area. So what we're going to do at this point where we're going to dig out a hole here is going to be the drop-off point. Here the minecart will fall down when the enemy steps on the pressure plate and then it will drive back and forth and grind them to death. Of course the enemy comes from the northern side. So to get this going we will require power but luckily I have already set up myself a nice little water generator here. I made a video about these so if you don't know how to build them Feel free to check it out, or you probably have your own ways and means to generate power. Whatever you do, you will require power for this setup, otherwise you won't have the minecart driving back and forth. So, with that out of the way, let's get further down with the business. So, here we have one train track not being built. Sometimes when a boulder is lying on top of them, they just uh, abandon these jobs. I don't know why. So, the next step is the power transmission. We will have to transport the power from the water wheels to the rollers downstairs. So, we're going to start here with a gear assembly which is going to lead into all directions because one part of our power transmission will go down here and the other part of our power transmission will go on over there. So let's get started with the real long part. Horizontal axle goes all the way over there. So it requires only eight logs though. And then we do the same part to over here. It requires locally only one axle, uh, one log. And then we put up one gear assembly there to connect this uh, on the corner. Your gear assemblies are, are basically like, uh, like junction corners. So as you see here, there's now a hole in the ground. We patch that up with a hatch. So also here goes the pressure plate in the traps menu. Make sure to make it uh, only get triggered by creatures, not by citizens. There we go. And for my purposes, I'm going to set up a uh, activation lever, but I'm only going to make that because I cannot activate the trap via the pressure plate myself, but I want to introduce to you how it works. So here we go. Power transmission from this point to that point has been almost established. We now need to remove the floor on this part to make sure that we can transport the power downstairs. So now we have here also that part done. So let's do this. By the at the end of this video, I have a couple of tips and tricks and thoughts that I had about the system and all. All right, here we got the hole in the ground. Next step, we set up the gear assembly here on this uh, level and we go downstairs and set up another gear assembly downstairs. So now we have the power transported downstairs. So here we do the same thing. I will dig away the ground here and then transport the power over there. So you might ask yourself, why am I not just uh, providing power like here? The thing is, the tiles around the, the the hatch where you want to drop off the minecart with need to be free of any gear assemblies or axles because somehow I realized the last time I tried this the uh, the dumped minecart gets sucked into gear assemblies for whatever reason that is so I don't have any in the vicinity. I don't know if this is a bug or a uh, intentional interaction but it uh, surely destroyed my intentions. So we got the hole up and running so next step goes a is a hanging gear assembly and another down here and then we go for two pieces of axle 
here. And another gear assembly on this corner here. That's because we want to transport the power from this point over to that point, and that's a uh, corner. So let's start with the rollers. We find these in the Machines and Fluids tab, rollers. So we set up one roller to push into this direction at maximum speed, of course. And we set up one roller into the opposite direction at maximum speed as well. And as soon as these are powered up, they will provide momentum to the minecart. The funny thing about these rollers is the moment the minecart enters the roller, it gets reset to the um, to the speed you have configured. It's not like the ro that the rollers would accelerate your, your minecart or something. No, it rolls over that thing and it says, this is the, uh, the uh, tempo that you have chosen. This is now the tempo the minecart has. These are pretty OP in that regard. Okay, so we're almost there. We're still waiting for that thing to be built, but uh, let's link also the pressure plate with a hatch. And of course, the lever with the hatch as well, but th that lever is not going to be a thing in your design. It's going to be important to have that thing here uh, linked because otherwise you won't be able to store anything on top of it staying up there. Otherwise the hatch will be just uh, opened at some point and that would be detrimental. So let's, uh, let's pull that lever here and start the water generator. And as soon as the hatch is locked, we're going to deposit something on top of it. I need to go upstairs now for a second and delete my old dump pile zone. And now we get back downstairs to our trap operation. All right, so this takes a while because uh, the boulders have to be removed and uh, things, but uh, you see here, construction is being it's in progress. So here we have the same glitch as usual. For some reason, your dwarves love to abandon jobs when there's a boulder on top of them. Who knows why? I surely don't. Okay, so as you see there, we're almost done there. Now, this thing is now locked. Next step, you put a garbage dump zone on top of this thing, and then you accept. Next step, you go to where your um, minecart is at. I know I have one in my smithies, so go there and select that and now I select it for dumping so our next free hauler will now go over there and put it to the designated dumping spot but guess what that's here so we're almost done now as you see the power transmission is uh, up and running this thing here does require not to uh, not not to not quite a low amount of power because of the uh, very long power transmission there you basically have to power the end and the beginning of your uh, of your train track for that monster to work so when you click the rollers you can check if they are powered or not and uh, i mean the axles they are pretty it's pretty easy to, to discern if they're running or not so the only thing that we now need to do is to wait until the minecart has been dumped there i'm going to fast forward that real quick for you all right, my friends, we're locked and loaded. As you see here, the minecart has been dumped and all the machines are ready to go. So all that's left now is to pull the lever. So here are a couple of notes and thoughts about this. First of all, the minecart system is going to be... Oh, wait a sec, is that already linked? Nah, it's not linked. The minecart system is going to be only as effective as the minecart is heavy. So basically, the heavier the minecart, here it goes the better the system. So this is a really, really deadly thing. And as you see there, the momentum is going to run out after a while. And that means the damage of that thing is going to be lowered after a while. But as you see here, it's bouncing back and forth and it's not always the same. It's a little bit erratic. But what I want to say here is the shorter the corridor, the easier you can make it happen. That stuff is uh, going to work as you want it to. So to give you a little bit of a demonstration of that thing here, we're going to go and create a new, very, very important patrol route here. And I'm going to show you what that thing is capable of. The real problem with these systems is that whenever they smack somebody, they 
they lose momentum. So that means it's going to be harder and harder for you. Oh yeah, here we have the first victim. Um, it's going to be harder and harder for your uh, for your mine card to reach the end of the of the train track if it's too long. So as we see here, the minecart strikes the lower body and explodes into gore. Yeah, so uh, as you see here, it's, it's totally destroying the people, but there is a chance that it rolls down. But as you see there, this, 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 is, this is a nightmare. This thing is totally mauling people. And now it's going to lead to a uh, very, very untimely um, amount of deaths because people try to save their precious, their precious people. You see, this is this is powerful. And uh, if you ever have a run system like this running, I, I strongly implore you to, for one, be sure that something like this here doesn't happen that easily, so keep your people away from that. And the other thing is, have that system stoppable at some point. For our scenario here, we're going to, we, we have a, a stop button for the power supply. I mean, eventually this thing will roll out. As you see there, it now stopped. So, but here, that's the minecart grinder. I'd say it really did a great job. It, uh, it, it showed us very well how much uh, destruction and demise one minecart can bring. And the funniest part about it is this thing can also be loaded with several other minecarts. So the moment you put another minecart on this system, so you, you dump another one down, it's going all back again because these rollers are what's making the uh, the nightmare happen. So I hope you found that quite helpful and interesting. I, I really think this is one of the nastiest and uh, finest traps that you can ever build. It, it's, it's damn satisfying to see it in action, even against your own dwarf. So that's somehow a little bit wrong. But feel free to leave me your comments. I'd really love to hear your thoughts about it. There's going to be a big appreciation for every thumbs up, of course, and feel free to subscribe. In the next video, I'm going to go into the minecart shotgun system as well. I hope you're going to look forward for this too. Feel free to check out the playlist link down there. There's a link to all the tutorials that I did for Dwarf Fortress. And at this point, a big shout out to the supporters of this channel. Big thanks. I really, really appreciate what's happening in the last time. And if you want to support the channel as well, there's a couple of links. PayPal, Patreon, and Buy Me A Coffee are the most obvious ones. I'd be delighted if you'd give them a look. Have a wonderful day and see you soon.